My name is Teresa Smith. I'm the mother of Cesar Cruz, who was executed December 11, 2009, in the parking lot of Walmart. I am a surviving mother of police terror. My son, Shalim, was murdered January the 3rd, 2018 by a BART officer by the name of Joseph Matu. I am affectionately known to the community as Uncle Bobby. I am the uncle of Oscar Grant. Who anticipates being killed. The two children was on their way to West Oakland, BART station, to go on an outing in San Francisco. On that horrible day that we got the news and he was on his way to pick up his boys because he was going to take them to football practice. Oscar simply went to see the fireworks in San Francisco, came back. There was an altercation on the bark train, eventually which led to his death. He gets into a scuffle with this older guy that's antagonizing uh, his companion. There was seven police officers that followed him, supposedly for a traffic stop. Those five police officers shot him 15 times in the back while he was still strapped in a seatbelt. His car, we couldn't even count the bullets because it was riddled with bullets. Johannes Mesley um, then shoots my nephew, Oscar Grant, while his hands were crisscrossed behind his back. Unable to move, was totally restrained. Gunshot went off twice. And Joseph Matu ran out with his gun drawn, where, where, where? Show me your hands, show me your hands. My son breaks loose from the altercation. His hands go into the air like this. And he shoots him three times with his back turned to him. When law enforcement murders our people, they hardly ever get prosecuted. And most times, the only investigation that takes place is by their own department. Of the five police officers that killed my son, two of them killed two more young men after they killed my son and are still on duty. Johannes Mesley had a history of violence against young men of color uh, prior to the murder of Oscar Grant. He had four, in fact. We read it in the newspaper that Joseph Matu was being promoted. The police shoot and kill because they can. Because they can. And they're going to continue to do this every day because they can. Many laws protect police from being held accountable when they kill our loved ones, giving them protections and rights that we regular citizens just do not have. One of them is the Police Officer's Bill of Rights. The POBAR prevents any real investigation of an officer. For example, when officers are investigated by the department for wrongdoing, they must be informed in advance that they will be interrogated, what it is about, and who will interrogate them. Because they're allowed time for their investigation, they can get their story straight. Police reports, I mean, it's all the same thing. They all say the same thing. He reached in his waistband. Oh, I feared for my life. Here's another one. Officers shall not be subjected to offensive language or threatened with punitive action. In other words, police can't be interrogated like they interrogate us. Did you know that every day people are threatened into taking a deal using the same tactics mentioned earlier? The hardest pill to swallow is how the law helps police hide their misconduct. Pobar says, no confidential reports may be entered into an officer's personnel file. Now who has the power to deem a report confidential? The same people that have always covered up police misconduct. Police departments, police unions, and the district attorney. So with Pobar, the police are free to clear their officers' personnel files from anything that could stain their reputation. And in 2006, the Copley Press Court decision added to the pile of unaccountability by making officers' personnel files entirely concealed from the public. The 14th Amendment says that we have equal protection under the law. But what this shows is that police get a special pass to kill with impunity. The first thing they do when they shoot and kill somebody is criminalize the person that they've executed, and the media jumps on it. The media says Shalim had a gun, he pointed the gun at the police officer, he refused to put it down, so the officer shot and killed him. But when I saw the video, it just broke my heart. There was no gun in my son's hand. My son had his hands up, and his back was turned to the officer. In addition to the power of the law, 
Police have powerful unions and a culture of racial violence that secures the continued killing and abuse of communities of color. More people need to know about these unjust policies and practices so that we can build a movement that is strategic and targeted as we resist state violence. Join us in raising awareness and let's build a movement to bring Pobar and Copley to an end.